Today we're talking note taking on the iPad 10th generation. Now I've been a long time iPad note taker. I used my iPad for years in college to take notes during class. And now that I'm out of college, I still use it to continue to take notes in whatever I'm interested in. And after using the iPad 10th gen for the past couple weeks for all my note taking needs, I come away with this feeling that Apple was really close to making this the ultimate budget note taking tablet but it falls just short of that title for a few key reasons. Before diving into the things I don't like so much, let's focus on what this iPad does well, because there are actually a ton of improvements here. And the most obvious upgrade is the complete redesign. The old base model iPad was getting pretty dated. It was one of the few Apple products left with a home button. It had those big bezels. So this refresh was long overdue. It now has the same design language of the iPad Air and Pro, so it kind of completes the iPad lineup on the budget end. Touch ID has been moved to the top power button. You get stereo speakers when in landscape mode, and you also get a USB-C port on the bottom, finally leaving behind the lightning port. And while it's the last of the iPad lineup to get a USB-C port, it's the first to get this new front camera placement. Now it's on the right hand side, which means when you're in a video call in landscape orientation, it won't make you look like you're looking off to the side of whoever you're talking to. This is a big improvement, especially as video calling continues to become more and more common in today's environment. And it leaves me wondering why Apple didn't change the front camera on their newly released iPad Pro models that just came out as well. Although I do have some theories about why that change didn't happen, which I'll get to later. And I've got to take a moment to appreciate these new colors. This is the first time the base model iPad has had color options to choose from besides silver and gray. And in my opinion, this yellow looks amazing. When the light hits it, it really makes the color pop and it looks great when combined with cases and accessories. Internally, this iPad gets an upgrade to the A14 Bionic chip, and this obviously has more than enough power for more simple tasks like note-taking and drawing, but it'll also keep up with some of the heavy lifting if you have plans for things like video editing or 3D modeling. Although of course, if those are your primary use cases, I would advise spending a little bit extra to get the M1 iPad Air, which has noticeably more power. So the display, it's about 0.7 inches larger than the ninth generation display. So you get a little bit of extra room to work with for writing and drawing, which is really nice, especially when doing things like split screen note taking. Now, the one thing that holds it back compared to the Air and the Pro displays is that it's not fully laminated, which means just like the previous base model iPad, it feels like there's a small air gap in between the tip of the pencil and the screen itself. This is most noticeable when looking at it from an angle while writing. That being said, it's still a good looking display with great colors, pretty good brightness at 500 nits if you want to use it outside, and it still has that nice sharp pixel density of 264 pixels per inch. And the last improvement I want to talk about is the new keyboard case Apple made, which they call the Magic Keyboard Folio Case. Now, I already made a full video on this case if you want to see a deeper dive into it, but to summarize, this is probably my favorite keyboard accessory I've ever used for an iPad for two reasons. Number one, the design. It consists of two separate pieces, which means you can easily fold the keyboard behind the iPad to set it flat to take notes which is super useful if you like to switch between typing and handwriting notes. This is something you can't do on the other Magic Keyboard case without fully removing the iPad from the case. And the second reason I like it so much is because it has a full row of function keys, giving you quick access to things like brightness controls, volume controls, and all the other function settings you have available to use on a full-size Mac keyboard. This really elevates the user experience because you don't have to touch the screen as much to use these controls. And again, this is something that I'm surprised is not available in the iPad Air and Pro lineup because it really is a big improvement. So the issue I have with this iPad, and I'm sure you've seen this coming, is that it still only works with the first gen Apple Pencil. I feel like with this design update, it would have been the perfect opportunity to quietly retire the first gen Pencil and just move on to a future with the second generation Pencil. The iPad Mini, Air, and Pro all use the second gen Pencil 
And I just really would have liked to see that here. And this presents another problem, which is how do you charge the first gen pencil with a USB-C iPad? And in classic Apple fashion, they said, don't worry, we have an adapter for that. So this is the USB-C to Apple Pencil adapter. Now, if you purchase a new Apple Pencil, you'll get this adapter included in the box. Otherwise, if you already have an Apple Pencil and just need the adapter, it'll run you $9. So let me just show you all why I find this so much more inconvenient. With iPads that use the second gen pencil, it's just a two piece system, the iPad and the pencil. But when you add the adapter and a charging cable, that immediately gives you two more pieces to carry around and keep track of. And I also have to keep track of the pencil itself since it doesn't attach magnetically to the iPad. And some people might say, well, the reason it doesn't have the magnetic wireless charging on the side is because Apple needed that space for the new camera placement. I don't know whether that's true. It seems like a logical explanation, but what I can say is given the choice between the new camera placement and having the second gen pencil, I would take the pencil every time. Now on the bright side, the Apple Pencil battery does last a pretty long time, about 12 hours. So you probably only need to charge it once or twice a week. On top of that, it also charges super fast. You can get a full charge in less than 20 minutes, or if you're really in a time crunch, just 15 seconds of charging will provide about 30 minutes of use. But at the end of the day, there's no denying adapters are just a pain to deal with. So I'll let you guys in on a little life hack I've been using, which is to charge the Apple Pencil using your iPhone. So you just plug it into the lightning port. I know it looks silly, but trust me, it does work. And this is how I've been getting by with the new iPad without the adapter. Of course, you will still need the adapter for the initial pairing process, but in terms of daily use, I find this much more manageable. And finally, the price. This iPad is gonna run you $449, so it's right in the middle of the $329 iPad 9th gen and the $599 iPad Air. And I have to say, at that price, I'm really on the fence with my recommendation. If it had the second gen pencil compatibility, it would easily be my go-to recommendation for the budget iPad crowd, no question. But as it stands, I think it's just too close to the iPad Air in terms of price, to not go ahead and spend the extra money on the Air. The Air will get you that fully laminated display, the M1 chip, which is super powerful, and of course, the second generation Apple Pencil. It's also worth mentioning that the Air has recently been on sale for well below that full retail price. Right now it's on Amazon for just $520. So if you can find it for around that price, it really is a much better bang for your buck value. But that's not to say the iPad 10th gen is still not a good option for some people. I think you just need to be fully aware of the adapter lifestyle and whether or not that'll be an issue for you. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.